Sometimes it's just nice to have your arse kissed a little bit, you know? It sounds so cheesy, it sounds so cheesy, but it's, it's a thing, it's a real thing. I think it's always good to have access to food. So today we are going to talk about 10 things. I think there's 10, I didn't actually count. There's usually about 10. Comment if I got it wrong. <laughs> All comments are good for the algorithm, even the ones that diss me. So yeah, in and around 10 things that we envy in Europe about America. As ever, my usual disclaimer, these are just my thoughts and opinions, generalizations. Don't take them too seriously. Don't take life too seriously. If you do, you're gonna be in for a bad time and life's hard enough. Don't be a silly Billy. She wanted to say, don't be a hater ass biatch, but she would never. Okay, the first thing is definitely a personal one of mine. It is t What just happened? Okay, the first one is definitely a personal one of mine. It is technology. Now I'm not talking like global huge things like the internet. Who actually invented the internet? I don't know. The invention of the internet was a collaborative effort involving several individuals and institutions. But in America, when I say they have a thing technologically that fixes every small problem in your life, they do. They have a thing that fixes every small problem in your life. For example, you are feeling overheated. A European will say open a window and American will say turn on the air conditioning unit. I was saying recently how hot it gets in summertime in bed and sometimes how you can't sleep. And one of my patrons told me about this amazing bed thing that cools or heats your bed up no matter how you're feeling. I was talking about how problematic sometimes leaving your key in a door is and you guys in the US told me to get this different type of handle on my door that requires a code. What I'm saying is Americans have a technological device that will solve your problem. I don't know why Europeans sometimes like to do things back to basics, we just do. An American default, I have a tech thing that will solve that. The next thing that I as a European envy about Americans is you have an expert for everything. There is a specialist who handles everything. I'm gonna give you an example. Recently I sent out my beautiful, only really designer thing I've had ever in my life, designer Louis Vuitton wallet to be repaired in a shop. It's a general repair things shop and it came back absolutely freaking destroyed. They destroyed it. I'm gonna name and shame the company here because why not? They have terrible, terrible reviews. I should have checked the reviews before. Anyway, I cried, but back to my point. After I was telling some of the patrons about it, you guys were saying, oh, you could have gone into a Louis Vuitton store and gotten it fixed. So I went into a Louis Vuitton store just out of pure curiosity and asked, and they said, no, you can do that in an American Louis Vuitton store, but we don't have specialists for that in most shops in Europe. A couple of months back, I had an issue with my oven and rather than getting an oven specialist, I had to just call a handyman. Now I'm not saying oven specialists don't exist, but they're not as handy. <laughs> As handymen, you'd have to be sending across the country potentially for this specific oven specialist. Whereas in America, you just have specialists who will drive like three hours because you guys have no concept of that being a long distance. You're like, it's just up the road, three hours. The next thing I definitely envy, and honestly, a lot of my friends do too, is you've deep fried everything, everything. America's attitude to deep frying stuff is sure, why not? Let's try it. Deep fried to perfection. And I applaud that. Don't look at my nails. I can't afford to get them done this week. The next thing you guys do really well is customer service. Okay, I do think there is a caveat in this because everybody has their own views on how they feel about the service sector being supplemented by the public. Most Europeans do feel that the restaurant that hires for example, a waiter or waitress should pay them enough for a living wage. Well, whatever your thoughts and opinions are, that that's not the way it is in America. In America, you tip. But as a result, everybody's super nice in customer service in America. Oh, I forgot to take my pimple patch off during this video. It's probably too late now. I have a pimple patch on. Same thing goes for stores. When you go into stores, a lot of people pay their shop workers a little bit extra if they sell something so they're paid on commission so they're super nice to you in the America in the America in the United States of the America 
Now, you could call this arse kissing, but honestly, sometimes it's just nice to have your arse kissed a little bit, you know? That's definitely not the case in all parts of Europe. Mostly when you get talking to somebody who works in the service industry, they're gonna be pretty sound, but there are also some people who are just like, you are an inconvenience to them being in that store. I would equate it to the most similar experience I had of walking around shops and going to restaurants is in New York City. That is a very similar attitude, in my opinion, to a lot of places in Europe. The next thing that I envy about America here in Europe is you can vacation anywhere in the United States. And even if you wanna go somewhere hot or somewhere cold, you can just go in your own country. Here, it takes a lot more planning to travel. You have to go across an ocean usually to go on vacation. And with that comes a lot of things like passports. I do think it's wild how you have hot places and cold places in one place, even though it's a really big place. The next big thing, and this is a big thing, and I do think that a lot of Europeans envy this about the United States of America. It's how you can get anything at any time because your stores are always open. Not all your stores, mom and pop shops usually close, but you'll always have like a Walmart or a Target open. Am I right about saying that? Is that, are they 24 hour? Well, no, because Natalie Portman got locked inside one in a movie. 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Okay, so most Walmarts close for a couple of hours. But in my experience, there are definitely shops that are open like at 2 a.m. in the morning. That it is not a problem when I've been to the States in most places to find a shop that is open at all hours. In Europe, we do have things like 24 hour pharmacies and stuff, but you won't, it's hard to find. In some parts, you'd have to drive a really long time. And the same goes for fast food. You can get fast food at like 4 a.m. if you want in the States. I remember when I was a drunken college student and there'd only be like one chip shop open at that time. Whereas in America, you have so much choice. You can go to a million different places when you're drunk. Which is a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. But I better soak up the alcohol with some food. I think it's always good to have access to food. The next thing, and this is, I guess, more of a character trait of Americans, but it's how you guys are always in awe of, like, old things. It's just very charming. And I realize that might sound condescending, and I don't mean it like that. But I love how an American sees a castle or a really old bench. They're like, wow. And... Well, no, they're more like, wow, that's my American accent. And I just think that's really nice because we're just like, yeah, see that all the time. It's also really nice how you cherish your cultural identity. You're super into your heritage and like what parts of the world your ancestors came from. We don't care in Europe. For the most part, we, don't, we just don't really care that much. If it's more than twice removed, we, we just don't care. If your parents came from a place, you're probably gonna be interested in that culture. But if your grandparents or great grandparents came from a place, it's less common to be super hyped about it or have it as part of your everyday life. I like how Americans are in awe of those things. The next one will come as no surprise. And I do think all of my friends and family who've been to America have commented on this. It is your choice of products and services. You have so much choice to the point that for me, when I'm in the States, it's really overwhelming to see all the choice. But for example, recently I was on Twitch. Oh, I started Twitch by the way. And I needed to buy a new chair for this room for editor Diane. You're welcome. It hasn't arrived yet. Sorry about that. And everybody was like, oh, try this place, try this place. And I was like, I can't because shipping and all that stuff. And really I only had a choice of like, two or three places I could order from that I trusted. There are other places you could order from, but you don't necessarily know them and yeah. So there was like Amazon, Ikea. There are many, many more, I'm sure reliable websites you could buy from, but in the United States, like you guys were quoting me chair companies galore, like famous, famous chair companies. I don't think I know of any company in Ireland or Spain that specifically is like a chair company. Like they just do chairs. And I'm gonna go back to my old reliable, which is cereal. I freaking love cereal. You have so much choice in America. We do not have that much choice in Europe at all, at all. The next one, I'm gonna leave it really simple. Two words, free refills. I don't know why this isn't a bigger thing in Europe, I guess, because they make so much money off the drinks, but it's so annoying. And it's so nice when I go to the States, I'm just like, more refills, please. I'm like a spoiled child. I'm like, I need to be refilled three times. I, I need to get my money's worth here. 
And the number one thing that I as a European envy uh, about America, oh, it sounds so cheesy, it sounds so cheesy, but it's, it's a thing, it's a real thing. It's the American dream. Anybody can go to the United States and anybody can become a billionaire, theoretically. Now I know that's very much just a theory, like your education, a bit of luck, all that kind of thing. But for example, when I used to be an actor, all of us were fighting for these tiny, very few parts that came across people's desks in casting. Whereas in America, every state has its own film, TV industry. Not every state, I'm sure, I don't know. Does Georgia have a thriving TV? I bet you have your own TV stations. And that's the thing, you just have so much opportunity. That's just one industry and there's so much opportunity. Opportunity is not as, there's not as much of it in Europe. I also feel like in America, people are looked at as independent more so. Nepotism is of course the big thing, like the Nepo baby culture. But also people applaud people who make it on their own. I think that is also to do with how people will live really, really far apart from their families and stuff. There's just a huge opportunity for growth. Opportunity, maybe maybe opportunity is a less cheesy word than the American dream. But yeah, I think that's really lovely. And those are just a few things that I envy as a European about America. Let me know below in comments if there's anything about Europe that you envy as an American, or indeed, if you wanna add anything to my list. And hey, if you like this video, do check out my Europe versus USA playlist. I can't remember if it's on this side or this side, where we'll look at more specific things and some of the lists are a bit more fact rather than opinion based. See ya.